What is up guys, this is Kai from Kai Creative and today I'm counting down my top 10 tips on how you can successfully film your corporate events. So if you're a videographer or a filmmaker or a cinematographer, if you do weddings or if you just film for fun, eventually you might be asked to film a corporate event. Now corporate events differ in a lot of different ways compared to weddings or probably just casual events that you might have done in the past. Today I'm counting down my top 10 tips on what I feel is necessary for you if you're going to do event videography. Number 10. So number 10 is have a good quality lens that works well in low light. So a lot of corporations use hotels to host their events and hotels, especially those in central London, can be quite dark and dismal. They might have very old orange type lights or they just might turn the lights off altogether and just have lights on the stage of whoever's presenting or whatever panel might be going on. So it's very important to have a good quality lens that works well in low light and preferably a zoom lens, which we'll talk about later. So we shoot a lot of our content on the 70 to 200 millimeter Canon L lens. And the great thing about this lens is it's 2.8 aperture, which opens extremely wide and so allows more light in, which is perfect for filming events. And because it's a zoom lens, you can zoom in on people uh, without them having their face in the camera too much or know that they're being filmed. Number nine. So following on from point 10, point nine essentially is make sure you set your white balance for every location that you're gonna be filming in. Like we said earlier, the light conditions, especially in hotels or older theaters or wherever they're hosting the event, can be pretty dim and dark and the lighting that they use can be old-fashioned and yellow as we mentioned earlier so making sure that you know where you're going to be filming what locations where the presentations maybe panels will be make sure that you get your white balance set for each location have it ready have those pictures taken on your camera so you can pick up uh, white or gray cards from ebay for quite cheap or just use a white piece of paper to make sure you set your white balance so that you're not struggling in post to color correct this really oddly colored content. Number eight. So a lot of conferences or events are going to have screens, TV screens, projector screens at the event. And we film a lot of our video content on DSLR cameras, which can be a bit of an issue with flicker on these screens. So if possible, Try not to film towards screens. Try to try to avoid that flicker that you get from screens like TVs or from projectors. If you absolutely have to shoot towards a screen and you do get a bit of flickering and you're shooting on a DSLR camera, you can adjust the shutter speed, maybe up or down, to try and counteract the flicker that you get on screen. But my advice would be try and set your camera up first to avoid getting that flicker or you're going to have a nightmare in post-production. Number seven. So tip number seven is to think about your sound. Having a microphone like a Rode video mic on top of your camera probably won't suffice for picking up decent sound at the event, especially if you want to get key narration or key notes from the speakers to add into your production that you make afterwards. So one way to combat this is to use a H1 Zoom mic, which we will put on key speakers of their presentations that we want to take sound bites from. If we want the whole event, which sometimes uh, we do, we use a H4N Zoom and we basically go up to the sound guys and we ask them to plug the H4N Zoom mic into their mixer desk and then we do a few level checks to make sure that we're not peaking over like minus six and then we just record the whole event. Number six. So tip number six is a continuation from tip number 10 talking about the type of lens you use. As mentioned, we want to use a lens that works well in low light, but essentially we also want to use a zoom lens. And the reason we want to use a zoom lens is because we don't want a camera up in people's faces. Whenever you're filming a corporate event, the key things to film are people having conversations. You want to focus in on people's eyes, their hands, their gestures. If you can get people smiling and laughing, that is corporate event video gold. There's nothing that makes people happier and smile than see other people being happy and smile. And that's kind of what you want to do. It definitely evokes emotion in other people when they see other people smiling and laughing and having a good time. And that's what you want 
in your corporate video. As mentioned before, we use a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 L lens, and it's not cheap. So you might be thinking, well, what can I do if I don't have this lens? Well, one of the things you could do is rent the equipment and then include the cost of that rental back into whatever you charge your client. That way you're giving them quality and you're not having to pay for it out of whatever the client pays you. Number five, make sure you get a copy of the schedule. Get a copy of the schedule from the event organizer so you know what is happening in what order. As well as this, you want to talk to the event organizer beforehand to find out what they want you to film. Do they want you to film the CEO? Are there key speakers they want? Are there panels? Are there discussions? Make sure you know what the client wants included in the promotional material that's going to be used afterwards. Additionally, you definitely want to film the intro of every single event that you film. And the reason I say that is because the introduction to the events is full of energy and passion and vigor. And generally, you will have a key speaker from the company introducing the event. So you definitely want to have them on camera and collect their sound bites. It's also a good idea to film people at this stage in the event. Because as the day draws on, you might notice people start to get tired, they might start to get bored, they might start to play on their phones, and you definitely do not want to include that content in your corporate event video. Number four. Point number four is to shoot with your edit in mind. Now that means not just shooting video for the sake of shooting video. Have an idea of what the end product is going to look like and go after those shots. So don't just film hours and hours of the same angle or the same view, switch it up, get different angles of people. Even though it's a corporate event video, you still wanna tell a story. So you want the viewer to follow the story of this corporate event. You want them to see the intro, the beginning, you know, the middle, the meat of the event, and then perhaps the end with a call to action. What do you want the viewer to do? Perhaps subscribe to something or sign up next year to the next event. Another thing I would advise is shooting all the details. Someone has spent a lot of time putting those table arrangements together, putting those favors out, getting those flowers, making those banners. Get as much branding in there as possible for your client. Make sure that their brand is seen and evident throughout your video. This helps to build brand awareness and makes people aware of who's actually running the event. Number three. So point number three is to make sure that you get interviews with key speakers in the day. For event videos that we do, we generally set aside about half an hour to an hour, as well as a quiet spot to film with CEOs, to film with key speakers and panelists, and people that organize the event. And the reason we do this is to really help with the production later on, to fill in the narration and the story that we might have missed um, from just filming the event alone. Having that additional content really helps to tie the story together and again, it tells the story of the client, of the corporate event, of the corporation that you have been hired to film for. When you're filming interviews, it might be you filming and asking the question. If that's the case, it's very useful to have some questions to hand. If you don't have questions at hand and you're put on the spot to do interviews, just remember who, what, why, where, when, how. Remember those open-ended questions will lead to responses that are not just yes and no. That's a key thing when doing interviews. And focus on the event. Basically, they need to be doing more talking than you. If you have to film the interview in a busy room with lots of noise, then turn the levels right down and do your best to bring the mic as close to their mouth as possible. Number two. Point number two is to be mindful of what you're wearing and how you look. On your corporate event filming day, you're going to be busy. You've got to remember your camera kit, your sound, your lighting, scheduling, interviews, there's a lot to remember. But paying attention to how you look and dress is also just as important. So why is it so important? Well, if you're going to a corporate event, the likelihood of most people wearing corporate clothing is going to be very high. You might think that you're behind the camera, so wearing a t-shirt, jeans and being unshaven is fine. But is that the case? A lot of people that are going to be there are going to be business people, so they're going to be dressed very smartly. And the key for you is to try and dress to a similar level, a similar smartness as the crowd you're going to be filming. You have to remember that if this is your income, if this is how you're making income, then you want to attract clients and possibly get more work for the client that you're currently working for. But there's also a high potential to get work from other 
companies or businesses that might be attending this event. So always remember that when you dress for an event. And this brings us on nicely to point number one. Number one. So point number one on our list has nothing to do with cameras or lenses or kits or sound or lights or any of that technical stuff. Point number one is how you act when filming your corporate events. So why is this the most important point in my opinion? Because you're filming a corporate event, you want to come across extremely professional and unobtrusive. You want people to know that while you're directing and taking the leads in filming this event, at the same time, it's not your event. You've been brought in or hired to film this event for another company. So you need to remember that. Additionally, if things don't go according to plan, you don't want to get angry or frustrated or complain or go off in a huff because that does not look very professional. And in the long run, that could be very damaging to your company, your business and your freelance career. On the other hand, if you're friendly and you smile, you engage with people, you're unobtrusive, you move out the way when you need to, people notice that they take notice and they remember you for next time. So they might think there was this really nice videographer, this really nice corporate event filming guy that I met at this event. What was his name? Can you recommend this person? And what you start to find is just by having a good manner, by maintaining a professional stance at all times, people will recommend you and then you'll get more work. So point number one, how you act when filming your corporate events, in my opinion, is the most important point. Bonus tip. So here's my bonus tip. When shooting corporate events, use a two camera setup. And the reason I say that is because if you've got two cameras, you can get twice as much good stuff. So I like to put a wide angle lens on one of my cameras and I like to keep that on a slider and get a lot of establishing shots that way. And I'll have another camera set up with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And I'll use that for close ups and details and people chatting generally. I have both of these cameras on carbon fiber tripods so that they're not too difficult to move around. Generally, I have a second shooter, Jay, so I don't have to carry around two cameras, but when he's not available or I can't get a second shooter, I do use a two camera setup myself and you just get into a flow where you're able to leave a camera set up somewhere where it's not in anyone's way it's not blocking any doors or exits and you can leave that to run for a bit and you can move around using your other camera and then you can come up and change it around again this is really just to add a variety of different types of shots to your filming and this really mixes up the corporate event promo video that you make later on so that's my top 10 tips on how you can successfully film your corporate event video. If you do shoot corporate event videos yourself and you've got ideas, then please let me know in the comment box below. If you'd like to see more content on different subjects in filmmaking, again, let me know in the comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe to Kai Creative. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you next time on Kai Creative. or the corporate or and blah, 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 and proverbially from camera ah even though it's a cop another thing yeah uh, so a lot of event filming that we do we will uh, so for a lot of event video so that's my top 10 tips on how you can successfully film blah, blah, blah. a lot of hotels uh especially older hotel uh, a lot of these hotels this is not, this is not going well.